Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're going to be doing something new. We're not actually going to be doing a problem, but I will go over the kind of the steps you want to go through if you're new to leak code, depending on how much time you have and where you're at. And I'll describe pretty much what I did to start off and how I got to the level I am at now. And I'm nowhere near like a top, uh, you know, competitive programmer level, but I can fairly easily do medium questions and I can for pretty much every question on LeetCode to this point, even if I can't solve it, I can look at a decent solution and I can understand it and I can teach it to you guys. So that's what I'm doing for a lot of the videos. Let's say even I look at a problem and I don't understand it, but I can go through a solution. I can think about what exactly is going on and I can show it to you guys to, you know, and then that shows my demonstration and late, later on I can code up that same solution if I need to do that again. So that's another important skill. But anyway, let's get started. So what I will say is, and I'll give you a brief um, description of where I was at when I started. So I had a CS degree and I graduated, but I actually wasn't doing tech. And so when I started applying to tech companies and I got a lot of tips on, you know, start lead code, get better at it. And I thought I would be really good because I was like, oh, you know, I have a CS degree. And then so I even got to two sum. And I couldn't actually solve two sum. I think my friend asked me like, hey, here's this two sum problem. Can you solve it? And I actually couldn't even do this. And looking back now, that's obviously kind of silly, but that's where I started. I couldn't even do these easy problems. And so what, what worked for me really well is I actually got a premium membership. And then there's a really great, um, if, and this is, like I said, if you have, I'd say to do as much as you can, uh, you'd, you're probably going to want to have like months of free time. So I'd say ideally like, you have like six months of prep where like you don't have an interview tomorrow, but you're going to be starting. I would recommend going to this explore cards. And so these explore cards are really good and actually started at arrays, I believe. And so you're going to want to read. And obviously, like you probably know what an array does, but can you actually do these problems with array as well? And I was doing these problems. So you, what you want to do is you want to go through it all. You want to read and then you want to try to do the problems. And then let's say you don't know how to do a problem then you can, they have solutions. And also you can just like put this in, you can just Google this and then it'll have the problem and it'll have the solution. And so what you want to do is you want to read through it. You want to read through the stuff They do have pretty good explanations. And then you want to do the problems. And if you don't like the solution, then that's where YouTube comes in. You can just YouTube solutions for most of these problems and you just find someone on YouTube um, that you like. I, I mean, I don't have videos for these easier ones, but there's a lot for that. And, uh, yeah, and, and you are going to want to make sure you have good explanations. So at the very least, if you can't do the problem, you need to be able to understand the solution. And then what I would do is if you can't do the problem, understand the solution, write down the problem, say like, okay, I couldn't do this problem, but I got the solution. Or even, or even if you don't understand the solution, maybe write down, I could do the problem or I couldn't do the problem and I couldn't understand the solution. So let me write that down. And then what you're going to want to do is once you understand the solution, you're going to want to write it down. And you're going to want to go back and redo that problem. And so you'll see that a lot of times when I do a lot of these videos, I, I have done the same problem many times. And so the first time I did a lot of these problems, I had no idea what to do. And so what you're going to want to do is, like I said, you're going to want to try to do it. And then if you can't, you're going to want to get the solution and then you're going to want to code it up yourself. And the more of these problems you do, it's, it's critically important that you look at the solution. If you just try to do a problem and you, don't understand it and you just move on, you're going to learn nothing. Like you're literally going to learn nothing. So you need to understand the solution. And then when you see a problem that's similar in the future, the more of these you do, you're going to be like, oh, I didn't know how to do something like this, but this is similar to what I did. So now I'm going to understand it. So with these explore cards, they're going to teach you different topics about one data structure, like inserting whatever into an array, you know, so I will actually also make a list of the order I would recommend doing these explore cards in and then how many I would do. So for me personally, you can see here, uh, I did pretty much all of them except for SQL, machine learning, system design, you know, things that aren't really related to uh, coding interviews for the most part in decision tree. But I would say, you know, at least like the ones I'd recommend right off the bat that are probably pretty good or dynamic programming, arrays, graph heap. I don't think you need a bit manipulation sorting. Um, linked list binary tree or recursion, you're going to need for sure. Binary search, also super common. And yeah, so something like that. 
So at least half of these you're going to want to have. And then some other ones, if you have time, do it. If not, whatever, like a try or like a binary search tree or an array tree, you're probably almost never going to see. So once you do these explore cards, the reason they're important is because if you just go and you just say like, okay, and this is what, this is what I started actually, this is my idea in the beginning. And this is terrible to be honest. So if you just um, sort, I think you can sort these problems by, uh, by number and you just go number by number by number. Well, the problem is probably you're not going to be able to solve any of them to start, or maybe you will, but you're going to be learning like 1% of one topic. And then you're going to learn 1% of another topic and 1% of another topic. So nothing's really going to stick. So what you want to do is you want to try to focus on one topic until you're comfortable in it and then move on to the next one. And that's why these explore cards are really good. Cause for example, for things like dynamic programming, they have a ton, they have a ton of problems and they have a ton of explanations. And then, like I said, if you, if you get some problems that you don't like, then that's taking a little while to load. If you get some problems that you don't like the solutions to, then you can always YouTube them later or things like that. So yeah, so let's just show you. Um, and I think you do need to get premium for this dynamic program, but honestly, if you're applying to interview jobs, uh, the cost of leak code compared to what it gives you or something like leak code easily pays for itself, right? Like if you just think of what the, you know, what you would get by getting into a job that's like, or getting a slight salary boost of like leak codes, like a hundred dollars a year. So I definitely would recommend it. Okay. So let's just see if there's a DP. Okay. Hopefully it loads, maybe not, but whatever. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, like for this dynamic programming, there's an intro. And for most people, if you've never done dynamic programming, there's just no way you're going to solve these problems. Absolutely no way. And so you're going to want to read kind of how it works. They give you a framework, right? So they tell you like, this is, this is the steps. This is like, this is the base case. And then they give you some really easy problems that are really common. So you work on those. You honestly, in the beginning, you might not be able to solve any, but that's okay. You read the solutions and you keep growing upon them. And then, like I said, write down any problem you couldn't do, write down later. Also, yeah, so I'd finish these explore cards. And then by the time you finish these explore cards, you should be comfortable on, you know, the main topics. But the, the main difference between the explore cards and actual problems in the, in the explore card, they tell you exactly what algorithm you need to use in the problem, right? Because it's like if it's a dynamic programming explore card, it's dynamic programming. But the other hard thing about a lot of these problems is honestly, and this is from coming from my experience at this point where like, I know most of the algorithms, the hard part isn't doing the algorithm. It's figuring out what algorithm to use and how to apply it. So if I, so if I tell you like, this is the problem, you're going to need to use this. And I give you a brief description. It's pretty easy once you know the algorithms to do that. So then your next step is going to be do either like a medium problem or a random problem or so on. Once you're comfortable, you're going to want to do, I would say at least a medium problem. I'd say, I mean, you can't, you can't, you can start with easies. And I'd say like, I do have videos of like the easy speeder and you should be able to do an easy problem pretty, pretty like in five minutes or so for the most part. And if, if you're not, so yeah, I guess you can do random easy problems, but like I'd say, in terms of how long it would take you to get good at those, you can easily be good at easies, but then like at the mediums and hards, it's going to take you quite a while to be good at. So then what I'd recommend is maybe doing, um, so there is actually this, I would recommend doing this. There's a blind 75 list. And the nice thing about this, and then you can just skip problems that you've seen already. So they don't tell you what algorithm you need to use. You need to figure it out. And so that's, that's like half the work in a lot of these problems is figuring out what algorithm to use and how to apply it. Cause once you know, like if I tell you like, okay, we're doing, you know, mm, like, so let's just give you an example of some problem. Um, yeah. So let's say we're doing like house robber two, and I tell you, okay, so this house robber problem is dynamic programming. And you know, so you can solve it with that. That gives you like half or more of the difficulty of the problem, recognizing the algorithm. And so what I would recommend is do these 75 problems or the other thing you can do is you can pick a meet, I would say probably start with the mediums. So do a medium, you can click random problems and then you just get a random problem. And if you haven't done it and it's not SQL, obviously, then you can try doing those. And that would kind of mimic an interview setting. And that's what I started doing on a playlist that I've been doing. And you can see also like when, when you do problems that you haven't seen, it is so much harder than doing a problem that you have seen and you know the solution or you've seen the solution because you have to think about it on the spot. And so you're forced and you can time yourself as well and be like, okay, I'm going to give myself, you know, 20, 30 minutes, whatever, 
and then doing that problem. So that's going to be the next step. The first step is going to be explore cards, be comfortable with the majority of the main algorithms. I will write, I will make a list of what algorithms I went through in order and what I'd kind of recommend, because I do think that like you want to go through the easy stuff first in the explore card. So you want to go through things like arrays, you know, arrays, link lists, like the really basic stuff, because you're going to use that everywhere else. So, you know, arrays, link lists, uh, dictionary, I'd say if you just know what it is, that's probably good enough. Like just the basic dictionary methods, if not, whatever, then you'd probably want to do that because dictionary is also one of the most commonly used things. But anyway, so that would that's what I would recommend as a leak coder. But yeah, doing these problems just randomly, you're going to get absolutely nowhere. And then the other thing I would recommend that I actually didn't like I didn't do this to start. And I think it hurt me a lot is like, let's say you get I actually had some examples of this. So I was doing the uh, recursion explore card. I think it was this one and I really dreaded it. So I got to this backtracking and I'm sure a lot of people got this and I got to these problems and I've never done them before. And I tried to code this up like the Sudoku solver, for example. So I was like, okay, it's pretty straightforward, you know, whatever, I'll try to code it up. And it took me like, like I did get a valid solution, but it took me like three hours. And so I'd say if you can't come up with a starting point within like 10 to 15 minutes, if you're just stuck, then just look at the answer. Like it's not worth, you don't get anything. You don't get any points by coming up with something yourself. And a lot of these, it's pretty much impossible, right? For example, like there's a lot of these where like you go to like this linked list, where's the linked list? And you're gonna get to some problem like, let's see if they have it here, two pointer. No, linked list cycle, here we go. And actually, they don't have the solution, but oh, actually they do. So if you go to the solution here, it's a so hash table maybe you get, but like, do you really think you're going to come up with the Floyd cycle finding algorithm if you haven't seen it before? Like, yeah, maybe if you're a genius, but otherwise, good luck. So these are the things that like if you can't figure it out. And, and by the way, the other the other thing I'd recommend is once you do get a solution and you think it's the best solution, check the either watch a YouTube video or check the editorial and make sure you actually have, you know, the best time and place complexity possible or close to it. So you want to check, you know, things like that, the discuss section or the editorials or YouTube videos. Like I think any anything I made a vid video on, I post the optimal solution. And so you're definitely going to want to do that, because if you think when, when I actually first. Uh, so I actually had an interview, I think it was a long time ago, and I was like, OK, well, people told me to do lead codes. And so let me do leak codes. I have an interview in a week. Let me just do a couple problems. And so I would go to these problems, right? And I would do, I remember, I think I did two sum actually. And I was like, okay, well, two sum, right? Pretty easy. All I have to do is just do a nested for loop. And then a nested for loop would give me the answer. And that's pretty good. Like I got the answer. And so, but if you do that in an interview, that's pretty much a fail for it's something like two sum, right? So that's the other important thing is like, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're your space and time complexity is good, not just you've done the problem. That's another big part of it. Because for a lot, for, for most problems, getting the brute force solution, I would say, is a fail. And so you're definitely gonna and you're definitely gonna want to be aware that you got the optimal solution. So you're gonna want to check, you know, after you do the problem, did I do the most optimal thing? Is there something I can improve upon? So looking at other other people's code for this is very good. For sure, because there's usually going to be things you can improve upon and then you can be like, oh, you can do this in a cleaner way. You can do that in a cleaner way. I'm going to implement that for myself next time. Like when I when I'm doing a lot of these problems, I got a lot of these things from YouTube videos I watched that other people did and they did a lot of stuff. And I thought, oh, this is clever. This is this is good. This is what I'm going to do to improve for myself, like using like, you know, a slow and a fast pointer to get the middle of an array instead of just using a counter. That's a little you know nicer and a little cleaner, a little faster. And so things like that. But yeah, and yeah, so I would say do the explore cards, make sure you get all the algorithms, write down problems you don't understand. Always look at the solution if you can't understand. And so, like I said, if you can't, if you're doing like when I started doing this two sum and I was and and then my friend literally said like, oh, do this two sum uh, and don't do and do and do, don't do an n squared. Can you figure out a way where you just have one loop? And I was just stuck. So if you can't, so for something simple like this, if you can't figure it out within, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, Look at the editorial, and then they'll tell you, like, okay, there's a brute force. That's what I came up with. Oh, a two-pass hash table. How does that work? And then, so so you want to really get un unblocked as fast as possible. You don't get credit by 
like drilling out a problem and getting it yourself in three hours. That's not worth the time. So I'd say give yourself 10 to 15 minutes. If you can't come up with anything, then stop. And if you can come up with something and you can't get something and I'd say like 45 minutes, it's just not worth it like to struggle and get everything yourself. Because at the end of the day, what's usually going to happen is that's the case is you're going to struggle. You're going to get something yourself. You're going to look at the solution. And you're going to be like, oh, half my code could have been better. So what's the point? So the better thing to do is read the solution and just mark down the question as I need to revisit this. I maybe do this problem in a week or two to make sure I actually understood what the solution was. So hopefully that makes sense to you. I think those are the main points. Do the explore cards if you have time. And if you don't have time, if you have an interview in like four weeks, um, there are, I do, I do think they have like a data structures crash course thing, but I honestly wouldn't. Yeah. So they do have this thing where it's like a data structures crash course where they do go through it, uh, pretty fast. But I would I would recommend doing the explore cards over this. This is like a if you have an interview, you know, in like a few weeks. But if you're going to be interviewing for months, then I would definitely recommend instead of doing this kind of thing, just do the explore cards by yourself one at a time as long as it takes you and figure out what algorithms you want. And like I said, if you do have extra time, then you can go into these, you know, crazy ones that are super rare. And the, usually the solutions that needed with them are kind of cool with them, but you can make something without it, right? Like, like a try or like an anary tree. I don't think I've like almost ever seen an anary tree problem that wasn't just like pretty straightforward that you didn't need it to know an anary tree for or like a sort. If you know like one sort, that's good enough. They teach you like 20 sorts, you know, like no one's going to ask you implement 20 types of sorts as long as you know, like what's a good sorting method and like what's the time and space complexity of that, you'll be fine. But yeah, for a lot of these, are they're definitely crucial because like something like a graph is super common or like a heap is super common. Obviously, array, linked list, you know, things like that recursion, like you're very likely to get asked if, you know, if you do, let's say you do an, an uh, like an onsite or something and you have, you know, a tech interview and an onsite, you have like five or six questions. You're very likely to get asked one of these common ones. And if you, if you, don't, if you don't know the data structure, there's no other way to do it, right? Like if you get a recursive algorithm or if you get a dynamic programming algorithm, I mean, maybe there's a way to do a dynamic programming better, but if you know the dynamic programming, it's a hundred times easier. So what's the point? So definitely I would recommend knowing the basics and yeah, once you do feel comfortable, start doing problems. And definitely, like I said, it's just not worth struggling for hours to do a problem. I did it for a few problems and then I realized like you're just sitting there, you know, whatever. Yeah, you got it done. And then you look at the solution and you're like, oh, it could have been done with like a third of my code. That was a waste of time. Okay, so I think that's going to be pretty much it for the leak code tips on how to improve and where to start. So hopefully you liked this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll continue making one in the future. Thanks for watching.